Oh, by the way, they haven't got around to making it yet, but if NECA makes a figure of Cherno Alpha, you bet I'll buy it. After Striker Eureka, this is my second favorite in the movie. Just look at him. He's a gigantic walking tank. He almost looks like something that 3A Toys would make. Well, yeah, I really hope they get around to making him, and if they do, I'll get it. Totally worth the wait. <laughs>
and there's a there's a close-up of the cockpit where the pilots would have ridden and uh, oh my god this thing is just fantastic the fact that it smells like paint rather than plastic is the only downside but considering just just how great the paintwork on it is I think that it's totally forgivable so um, the Pacific Rim toys uh, after Gypsy Danger had um, posability issues because of the sculpt clipping into itself and um, although and Striker Eureka having kind of limited legs also because of the sculpt it leads you to wonder like um, what what uh, is there any kind of limitations on Cherno Alpha the answer is no oh my god this is one of the most highly articulated toys I have ever seen um, but let's show not tell all right so uh, first is the hat. Um, it's sit it's situated on the thing's shoulders and is very strongly in place, very much like armor. Um, but then you can actually just give it a little slight pull upwards, and it'll pop up. It you almost it's very difficult to see the change, but now a ball joint is revealed, or at least a swivel that allows this thing to move around up there. I'll get into I'll get into what that's probably for later. But let's let's keep on discussing more of the articulation. Okay. The shoulder is on a double ball joint. There's a ball inside there, then a stem, and then a ball inside the arm. So so it has great range and you can actually get a little bit more range out of it by moving both stems and you can actually get him to bring his arm in front of the cockpit like he's putting up a guard that's cool uh, the elbow just about 90 degrees of bend there and there's a swivel below the elbow that works as a wrist swivel um, the fingers open and close and the arm extends you know, this is to do the old, you know, the whole punch thing. Like, the arm extends to put more oomph into that punch. Also, to give it more reach. Because, uh, you know, you know, because Cherno Alpha in the movie, as he was just basically a big solid brick, uh, not very flexible, but powerful and well defended. That's why the, the Yeg, the, um, the kaiju that defeated it had to spit acid on it to weaken the armor. And, um... But, yeah. Yeah! Um, ironic that it was the biggest, clunkiest, stiffest of the of the Jaegers in the movie, but the most flexible and well-articulated toy in the line. That's, that's kind of hilarious. Um, the, there's a ball joint at the waist, allowing him to flex like this and rotate you can rotate until until parts start to clip into themselves but that's about as much rotation as a human waist would get uh, hips let's move his arms up and out of the way to talk about those hips um, they have a universal joint they actually can go quite a bit inwards so it can actually like can can dance <laughs> da, na, 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 na. oh my god can can dancing that's that's awesome and they go out. They go out. They. That's way more range than than Striker Eureka has. I don't know about Coyote Tango, but it is way more range than you can get from Gypsy Danger or uh, Striker Eureka. Um, I think maybe maybe the other guy. The um, oh crap! I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Um, um, you know the red one. The name's gonna come to me later, and I'm gonna feel silly. Yeah, the red one has a uh, probably has a range that's close to this, but it's a really good range for a hip. And of course, it can go forwards. It can actually go all the way up. That's that's amazing. If Cherno Alpha had this degree of flexibility in the movie, he might have just been able to jujitsu his way past uh, that kaiju. All right, so the knee. All right, let's let's look at that knee. Let's move the camera a little lower. All right. This is about as far as Strike Eureka can bend his knee. This is 90 degrees. 
This is how far Cherno's knee can go. And then here, above his ankle, there's another disc that allows his foot to fold up even more. And, it, and yes, it also has just as much range forward. And then, as if that isn't enough, the foot is on this really, really wide-ranging ball joint. Look at how look at how far that ankle can rock. And the, and the ankle can move forward and backwards. Like that is look at that foot. Oh my god, this thing is a thing of beauty of articulation. I I don't that that's amazing. I I seen toys with this degree of articulation and paint job that cost like 60 bucks. This thing is amazing for only $20. It's it's a masterpiece, is what all I could say. This thing is, it is just unbelievably and totally awesome. I cannot believe how great this thing looks. It's fantastic. Oh man. Um. So let's talk about that hat. So, when I got the guy out of the packaging and was playing around his articula with his uh, jointage and stuff, I found out that he actually has enough of a range in his articulation to take on this squatting pose. Yeah, I mean, his legs completely fold up and then he can stand on his hands. And I wondered, this, this looks intentional. This looks like something that they wanted it to do. <clears throat> And I actually came up with an entire headcanon for it. <clears throat> uh, headcanon. I made a funny. Uh, speaking of headcanons, I always thought that these two gigantic things on Cherno Alpha's hat were enormous cannons. But firing them would cause so much recoil that it would make, Cher that it would make the mech fall backwards. So, it takes, on this po it takes on this squat pose where it braces itself on his hands so that when he fires the cannons, he he holds he's he's in a position with a low center of gravity and and a big heel to hold to hold back the recoil so he doesn't fall backwards, and that is and that is why that joint in the hat exists so that he it's there because now it's it's a rotary cannon shell this way. Cherno can aim his cannons without having to move the entire mech. Yeah, I, I just kind of wrote myself a mini fan fiction about how this guy fights Kaiju based solely on the fact that his articulation is this good. His articulation is so good, it inspires fan fiction! <laughs> okay, so... Um, I compared this thing to uh, to those to those robot toys that you that you find on 3A um, because I really think that that's what they were going for. They were trying to make a 3A style toy. I mean, it's enough that this thing kind of already looks like an anthropomorphized World War II era tank, but then they give it that that thick, heavy, weathered paint job and and all the jointage that you would normally expect to see in a toy at a much higher price point than this. But they did it all. And this, this was passion. Somebody really, really wanted this toy to do well. Somebody loved this, this character, this robot, so much that they just, they just that, that's why the that's why it it's in that's why this wave is so late it, because they spent all those months pouring over this thing and oh my god you buy this okay if you like Pacific Rim if you never even saw Pacific Rim but you like robot toys if, if you like toys if you like articulated robot toys get this thing oh. God, get this thing! It is so amazing in every respect, and you owe it to yourself to have this thing in your life. It is just that awesome. Ugh. Okay, this is Toy Customizer, Wake Angel 2001, signing off.